So a, a blood in the urine is not a normal finding. Um, it, the most serious findings of blood in the urine in somebody who's older will be a cancer. Cancer in the kidney, in the ureter, that's the tube going from the kidney to the bladder, within the bladder, or occasionally in the urethra. And particularly if one has risk factors for cancer, then this must be excluded first. And in general, if somebody is over 40 and they have blood in the urine, then cancer of the urinary tract needs to be excluded before looking for other things. If someone's younger than 40 and has never smoked, for example, then the risk of having a kidney cancer is less. In this case, it's common to see a nephrologist first rather than a urologist. I'm a nephrologist. And we look for uh, causes of blood in the urine that come from the filters in the kidney. So the kidneys, as you may know, are composed of millions of filtration units and the blood is filtered uh, and urine is produced. The filters are normally so tight that blood does not leak out. Sometimes blood can leak out through the filters. This can be a benign inherited problem or not even a problem at all, a benign inherited condition. But sometimes it can reflect inflammation in the kidneys that's causing disruption of the filters. And if that's the case, a kidney biopsy may be needed to determine the cause to see if there is treatment indicated for this inflammation. If blood is seen in the urine, then you should see a doctor. If blood is detected in your urine on a dipstick, you should see a doctor. In any event, it should be assessed properly, particularly because there can be serious causes for this. So higher levels of protein in the urine than normal it, it, it indicates disruption of the filter units in the kidney in most cases. As I've explained previously, the kidneys are made of millions of filtration units that filter the blood and urine is produced. The filter units are normally so tight that protein cannot leak out. Therefore, if there is protein in the urine, this implies disruption of the filtration units in the kidney, and this needs to be assessed properly. In most cases, a kidney biopsy is not needed to assess protein in the urine, unless it is very high, unless it's getting worse, or a diagnosis cannot be made with blood tests. You have one kidney for whatever reason, there is an increased chance of protein leaking into the urine because of something called hyperfiltration. The kidneys are working extra hard, and if you like, protein is forced out through the filters in this case. The commonest cause of hyperfiltration in the world is diabetes. In this case, diabetes disrupts the filters of the kidneys, and uh, protein therefore leaks out. So in diabetes, often there is a very low level of protein in the urine, and then as the diabetic kidney problem progresses, the amount of protein increases. There are other conditions that can cause very large amounts of protein in, in the urine. And if this is very high, this causes something called nephrotic syndrome, where the body is very swollen, the blood level of protein is low, and the urine level of protein is very high. This almost always needs a kidney biopsy to make a diagnosis. So any protein in the urine needs an assessment. If it is significant, it needs assessment by a nephrologist. So protein in the urine reflects uh, an abnormality of the filtration units in the kidney. The normal assessment process is to do a series of blood tests to look for immune conditions, which can cause disruption of the filters an ultrasound scan to look for the structural integrity of the whole kidneys, and an assessment of the urine to see how much protein there is, and in some cases, what sort of protein there is. In some cases, this is enough to make the diagnosis. In many cases, however, this is not sufficient, or we need to work out more detail of the kidney condition, how severe it is, and how likely it is to progress. The only way to do this is with a kidney biopsy. 
high levels of uh, protein in the urine can be due to conditions which resolve spontaneously. Most do not, however, and most need treatment, particularly treating blood pressure, sometimes to treat the blood pressure lower than normal. But to be sure that you have a condition that will resolve on its own, you would need a specialist assessment. And the risks and benefits of doing a biopsy or not doing a biopsy, the risks and benefits of waiting versus treating can only really be discussed properly with a specialist. So the colour of the urine normally reflects how concentrated the urine is. In other words, how well hydrated you are at the time. We often see these charts uh, around on the internet, sometimes in toilets, that show us uh, the, the gradation of a very concentrated urine and a very light coloured urine. In general, if your kidneys are working properly, then they will concentrate your urine when you're a bit dehydrated and dilute your urine when you're overhydrated, if you like, and that's normal physiology. So for most people to have this fluctuation is not a sign of ill health. And of course, we, most of us know that when we pass urine first time in the morning, it's quite dark because we haven't drunk fluid overnight. Uh, and also the hormone in the, in the body, ADH, uh, concentrates the urine overnight as well. If you see this in the, in the context of being well hydrated, then there may be an issue. If the urine is very dark, then there may be blood in it and this needs to be assessed. Other colours of the urine can change with supplements. For example, some very strong vitamin C can cause a, a, a green type coloured urine. Uh, and eating high concentrations of beetroot can give you a red coloured urine. If you're worried, you can discuss this with your doctor but a general fluctuation of light and dark urine during the day, variable according to how much you've had to drink, is normal.